Hey everybody, this is Steve. I just wanted to record a short video to <clears throat> Hi everybody, I just wanted to record a short video to talk a little bit about uh, comments overall on the um, Ancient Style and Commercial project, which I just finished grading and um, <clears throat> you should have my comments and grade for your individual project uh, on Canvas. So um, just to hit a couple highlights on overall things um, that apply to a lot of people's essays. Um, but first to get started, just in terms of being able to see the comments, you should be able to see my comments on your Google document itself. I make comments in the margin, sometimes I respond to other comments. And then I also do an end comment on Canvas. So there's a, there's a part in the Canvas discussion where you handed it in in the grade book where I have an overall end comment about what I thought of your project and things to think about if you decide to revise. I assign points to everything, and the points are basically a straight based on a percentage. If the, the an A is 200 to 180 points, a B is 179 to 60, a C is 159 to 40, less than that's a D or an F. Uh, keep in mind that for several of you, many of you unfortunately, either you didn't participate in peer review or you were late handed it in or something like that. And for those um, those of you, I deducted a grade um, for uh, the project, which is part of the problem. Some overall comments. I didn't think that this was necessarily the uh, strongest work that a lot of you probably could have done. And these are some things to think about as we move on to the next sets of assignments, because there's going to be two more major assignments. Um, we're in the process of working on one now with uh, the Strunk and White book and the Harris book. Uh, the first thing is that you have to do the reading. And I honestly don't know how to put this any more um, politely, um, but it was pretty clear to me from reading these projects that a lot of you didn't really read the selection I gave you from Crowley and Hawhey about ancient style because you didn't quote from it, you didn't really seem to know what they were talking about, and things like that. So the first piece of advice I have for everyone as they move on to the next projects and also if you decide to revise this one is you have to do the reading. If you don't do the reading you're not going to succeed at it. Second piece of advice, do the peer review and do the work ahead of time. I think that there was a number of people who perhaps waited a little too last minutey to do some of these things both in terms of peer review and in terms of handing it in. Not only does it hurt you grade-wise if you hand it in too late, and that's something that happened for a lot of people in terms of grade induction thing, but the peer review process is designed to help you improve your draft before you have to turn it in for a grade. Trust that process. Trust the response that you get from your peers. Trust the idea that maybe you shouldn't uh, write the project at the last minute before it's due, all that kind of thing. You do trust the process of trying to put this together ahead of time. Okay. Next thing, I think that a lot of people kind of missed a little bit of the boat here in terms of what the assignment was really about. And I and maybe I didn't clear this, explain this as clearly as I should have. Maybe some people misread the assignment. But the assignment is not really just to interpret a commercial, right? I could have given an assignment that says, tell me what this commercial means, and people could have written all kinds of different things. But that's not really what this was about, and that would have been too easy. What the assignment was about was write about what Crowley and Hahi, Sharon Crowley and Deborah Hahi have to say about ancient style based on the selection of reading that I gave you and use that reading to analyze something. And in this case it was analyze a commercial. I could have had I could have asked you to analyze a print ad. I could have asked you to analyze a speech that somebody gave. I could have analyzed all kinds of different things. But the real point is the Crowley and Hahi thing. And I think that a lot of people kind of got lost in that. I think that they spend too much time doing their own interpretations of the commercial instead of actually using the text, the Crowley and Hawhey thing. A lot of folks didn't seem to really be writing an essay per se so much as answering a test question. What I mean by that is is that you, a lot of a lot of folks have problems with introductions. Introductions are always hard. I always recommend that you write the introduction last. At least what I mean is, is that you revise everything and the last thing you should revise before you turn it in is the introduction because that can sometimes be the hardest place to get started. But a lot of people sort of said had sentences like, 
that just right from the beginning is like, I picked this commercial because, or um, from the class reading we learned or whatever, something like that. Well, that's the sort of uh, language that you might use if instead of having to write an essay that responds to the question, how does Crowley and Hawhey's notion of style fit in analyzing an advertisement, an essay like that, it's the sort of thing that you might say if you were just answering a test question. Well, this isn't a test. This is an essay. And I guess the easiest way that I always think about this is, is that imagine somebody who is uh, reading this who knows nothing about our class and knows nothing about the readings um, what kind of information would they need to have in order for this to make sense they would probably need to know why you're doing this they would probably need to know basically um, uh, who these Crowley and Hawaii people are and which has to do with introducing uh, sources and first reference and things like that um, and they'd certainly need to know what you mean by these different figures and tropes. Now that was something that was built into the assignment and I actually copied and pasted that part of the assignment to many of uh, many of you, for many of you in the comments that I gave you because again um, I don't have these different figures and tropes committed to memory either so what you were supposed to do was explain those in your essay using the advertisement as your evidence to sort of exa you know an example of what they mean by metaphor or hyperbole or irony or something like that okay um, okay so that's the sort of basic overview of the assignment several of you may want to revise this and there and you can revise each of the three major projects for the term there are some basic rules for this and these are kind of outlined in the syllabus as well uh, like I said, the only ones that you can revise are the major assignments. So that'd be this one, the next assignment that we're working on where you're going to be doing an analysis of the style guides we're reading, and the last one that we'll be doing this semester, which has to do with genre. Okay, you'll see what I mean when we get to that one. Um, those are the only three things you can revise. You can't revise any of the homework, as in like the discussion of forums or the blog posts or anything like that. Um, you can revise, uh, the grades can go up to whatever you know, if you start with a C, it can go all the way up to an A, um, except for whatever grade was docked. So in other words, if you lost a letter grade because you turned something in late or because you didn't participate in peer review, you can't get that part back, which is to say that the highest of the grade that that could become would be a, a B plus. Um, the third thing is, and this is really key, is that we need to meet um, either face-to-face or via Google Hangouts, or we need to have a phone conference, okay? You cannot just do a revision and then just turn it in and not tell me about it. Say, we have to have some sort of conversation. When we have this conversation, you need to have some kind of plan. In other words, it's not just a question of coming to me and say, well, I'll just change whatever you want me to change so I can get a better grade. No, no. You tell me. You've done the. You've worked on the, your essay. You've seen my comments. You've seen the comments from your peers. What sorts of things would you do differently? What kinds of questions do you have? What kind of changes are you going to make? All that kind of stuff like that. You need to have a plan. Um, next point. I'm not sure which point I'm on. Is you can revise any of the major projects, but only once each. In other words, you can't make a change to this essay, show it to me, and then say, "Well, is it a better grade now?" And then if you don't like my answer, revise it again. Okay, you only get one chance. And the next point about this is, is that these revisions are due at the end of the semester. So you might want to like, for example, put this one kind of aside for the time being, because you might want to think about it a little bit more, especially as we get into some of these other projects. And you also want to think about this in terms of revising strategically, which is really my last point. You know, um, if you're not happy with the grade that you got on this and you just want to revise it just for the sake of revising it, that's not really that useful of a way to spend your time potentially. You want to revise any of these major projects because it's going to make a difference in terms of your grade. And what I mean by that is, is that if you ended up with like say a B on this assignment and you end up with a B on the next assignment, you end up with a B in the third assignment, and your participation grade and uh, blog grades and stuff like that all end up being in the B territory, guess what? You're going to get a B. And so revising this essay just because you think you could do better 
that might make you, you know, feel better as a writer, but as far as like how to spend your time as a student, I don't know if it's necessarily the best strategy. Um, so hopefully we can talk through uh, some of these different things. If you have questions about any of this, by all means ask below. Um, and, uh, and we'll keep moving on. Uh, uh, two last things before I leave you to get back to work. And again, if you have any questions, whatever, ask below. Uh, you, you'll soon be getting graded information from me for the first half of the participation grade for the semester and also for the first half of the blog post for the semester. So that means by the end of this week, probably by Thursday-ish is my guess, maybe Friday-ish. Um, you'll have a fair amount of great information to work on in terms of what, how you're standing, how you're standing in the class right now. Um, and then the last thing is, is that take this to heart in terms of thinking about the next assignments. You know, um, if you don't feel like you've been, do if you if you feel like you um, didn't read the Crowley and Hawhey closely enough, and you know that, then think about that in terms of are you reading these other assignments, um, the Strunk and White book and the Harris book, are you reading those uh, two books closely enough? If you felt like you did read Crowley and Hawhey closely enough, but I still sort of suggested that maybe you didn't, well, then maybe you may need to sort of reevaluate what you mean by doing a close and careful reading of these texts because maybe you actually need to do a little bit more with it than you, than you might have thought. Um, I think that's it for now. Um, like I said, keep charging on with the assignments we're working on, and if you've got questions about this or anything else, just uh, let me know. I'm happy to talk. I'm happy to answer them below. I'm happy to talk to people individually.